looks like it's the Rangers reunion with Jordan Montgomery. Their hopes are nearly dead on that. And even though all the big bats are heading out to the AL East, the Texas Rangers probably still have the best lineup in the entire American League. We're talking about all that and more on this episode of Locked on Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked onto the World Series champion Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a criminally addicted Texas Rangers fan, covering this team for 10 seasons, including all five as the founder and host of Locked On Rangers. Thank y'all so much for making this show your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Hit subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Now, before we get into today's episode, this show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Now, there was an article by Ken Rosenthal in The Athletic this morning, December 8th. Um, unfortunately, it was not uh, breaking down uh, Shohei Otani signing with the Texas Rangers, but it was about the Texas Rangers and a certain pitcher. This one does not hit, at least not anymore. His name is Clayton Kershaw. I'm talking about the will they won't they of the last two off seasons at least and it feels like there has always been a pipe dream at least in my mind of bringing our large adult uh, highland park boy back home to texas um the not high school teammates but you know fellow high school graduates of the same high school at Highland Park as the Rangers GM Chris Young um, and Ken Rosenthal was talking about a potential reunion with Clayton Kershaw now this year it would be uh, different um, and it would be the Rangers have you know as good of an opportunity to present themselves as a winner as the Dodgers have the Rangers have as many World Series championships in the last uh, well in this century as the Dodgers do and theirs is even more recent and with a very young exciting core of hitters that he would be joining and he wouldn't be the only arm in the rotation now thinking about that rotation with you know there are basically four pitchers in my mind that have a claim for best pitcher of this generation or at least of the last 15 20 years and as of right now the texas rangers employ two of them max scherzer and jacob Grom. now if the rangers employed a third one of them the other is clayton kershaw and the last one is justin verlander any of those four at one point in time have been basically assuredly the best pitcher in baseball now as of right now it's kind of looking like it's garrett cole um but that's None, none of the, Garrett Cole doesn't have quite the longevity and track record of these guys. Granted, he's not in his mid-30s or late 30s or turning 40, uh, like some of them either have or will this upcoming year. But still, having three of the four best pitchers of their generation, granted, still on, on the back end of their career, but still all of them at their peak, very, very good. We, we've seen what Max Scherzer can do. We've seen what Jacob deGrom did in his five starts. Um... But it would be a questionable reunion at this point um, because, again, or not even a reunion, just a coming home, I guess, of Clayton Kershaw because he's never pitched for anybody but the Los Angeles Dodgers. And for the last two years, it has been more of a pipe dream than it is this year of is Clayton Kershaw going to come pitch for the Rangers? Is Clayton Kershaw going to come save the Rangers? And in the last couple of years, it, it would have been more of a savior type of role. And, and now... The Rangers have a lot of pitchers that are capable starters, not as many at, at the top end, top tier as they would like. They're about one shy. We'll talk about um, Jordan Montgomery and what Ken Rosenthal talked about in this. But it, it would seem like Clayton Kershaw reunion would come, you know, he'd come back uh, sometime in this summer is what he posted on his Instagram whenever he had shoulder surgery. November uh, 3rd was when he posted about it. Uh, it was the first surgery of his career, which is kind of insane for a guy who has been pitching in the major leagues for what 16 years 16 seasons he's been an all-star 10 times a three-time Cy Young winner the Rangers would have a combined eight Cy Youngs in their rotation if they signed Clayton Kershaw eight combined Cy Youngs between three pitchers that's bonkers 
absolutely bonkers. But one lefty who it seems like is not coming back is Jordan Montgomery. It, it is not a done deal, but one of the things that came out in this article by Ken Rosenthal um, is that, uh, quote, uh, the Rangers facing financial uncertainty due to the potential loss of their television rights deal seem unlikely to bring back left-hander Jordan Montgomery, who can argue that he has outperformed Aaron Noah, the Phillies $172 million man, over the past three seasons, end quote. Now, I don't know that I, I mean, you you could argue that, but I don't think that anyone's winning that argument, but he is left-handed and he is durable um, and he is coming off a World Series championship run where he was the Rangers co-ace with Nathan Eovaldi. And again, it's just really frustrating seeing this Bally situation impacting the Rangers' ability to spend money, not necessarily even be at the top end of the market for a Shohei Otani or for a um, adding a Juan Soto on a one-year deal. The Rangers had the assets to do that and to add m- maybe... I mean, he would have pushed them into the luxury tax range the Rangers traded for Soto. But we'll talk more about the the Soto and the Otani and why the Rangers lineup doesn't even particularly need either of those guys. But keeping them out of, you know, retaining a guy who made all the sense in the world in Montgomery is incredibly frustrating. I mean, the Bally sports situation is what led to the San Diego Padres having to trade Juan Soto because he was making $30 million and they are one of the few teams who actually spent above their means. Everybody else could probably do to spend more outside of, well, the Mets and what the Yankees are projected to do this year uh, if they sign Yamamoto as well. Um, But, I mean, it's just an incredibly frustrating and upsetting situation that is has such big ripple effects and it seems like every regional sports network is you know having these financial issues it's seeming like it might be affecting what the mariners were able to do even though they said they were going to add to their payroll uh, have a bigger payroll next year than they would this past year i mean they shed 15 million dollars and haven't signed that many players at, at all if any i think at this point they are linked to one former ranger um who i would have liked to retain and it seems like his services will uh not be happening uh not be coming back to the texas rangers but we'll get into that in just a second but still it is just an incredibly frustrating situation it would make all the sense in the world to have montgomery back i said if the rangers signed literally one free agent all winter i would want it to be jordan montgomery and uh this this piece by by ken it was literally the only thing that it said was that it seems unlikely the Rangers bring back Montgomery. I don't think that Montgomery is going to make anywhere in the $172 million range. But with what's being rumored about what the bidding is going to be for Yamamoto, which who is a 25-year-old who has never thrown a pitch in the major leagues, well, I still think is going to be exceptional and is considered the best pitcher in this free agent class. If he's going to get... $300 million, which it might even be north of $300 million with how crazy the Mets and Yankees are going to drive that price up between the two of them. Whoever doesn't get Yamamoto or Shohei or now Juan Soto is going to have some serious money to spend. And it seems like Jordan Montgomery might be a huge beneficiary of that, and the Rangers might be Uh, a huge loser of that, not being able to retain a guy who won them a World Series, who made all the sense in the world. Maybe he just wants to go to the East Coast and be closer to his wife, who is in doing her residency in Boston. Uh, I think there is definitely a fit with the Boston Red Sox. It would be unfortunate. Um, But again, Jordan Montgomery is a World Series hero, and even though he was only here for, what, 15, 16 starts? Maybe 17 games that he, he played in with the Rangers? They were sensational forever and he should forever be beloved by texas rangers fans even if he goes and signs somewhere else and the rangers can't return his services for all time he is going to be a beloved texas ranger one of if not the greatest one season or even half season ranger in franchise history coming up we're going to look at a former a rangers free agent who could be linked to a division rival and why the rangers despite all this hoopla out in the AL East still are being disrespected as the reigning champs. Right after this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. 
As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers Stay Hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. We're going to look in the next couple of segments about where the Rangers' uh, World Series odds are. They're behind a certain team in their own division and not even in the top three of most likely to win the World Series. We'll get into that in just a second. But, you know, you should check out those odds. If you think the Rangers are being disrespected and their odds are something you want to get in on, go go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel official partner of the NFL. Shout out to the Air Dators for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day on Monday's show. I'll be back talking about some developments where it pertains to the Rangers. Maybe the Rangers will have signed somebody else this weekend, um, but who knows, because these winter meetings were an absolute dud. But there have been some rumors flying like crazy the last couple of days, including one by, I believe it was J.P. Morosi, about a former, or a, I guess a current Rangers um, free agent. A guy who's played with the Texas Rangers who drove in the winning run in the final game of this World Series. And it is one of Mitch Garver who has been linked. This is John from John Morosi uh, 17 hours ago. So I think that was still today. Uh, no, 10 p.m. last night. Uh, Mitch Garver is among the free agent bats under consideration by the Mariners. He's a good fit for the Seattle roster because he can contribute at DH, catcher, and first base. The Albuquerque native posted an 870 OPS in 87 games for the World Series champs last year. Now, uh, first base is a bit of a stretch there. I mean, Mitch Garver has played, like, what, three games at first base over the last, like, three seasons? It has not been very much. It is mainly catcher and DH, and the Mariners have many holes on their roster, um, but catcher is not really one of them. DH is definitely one of them. He's played 15 games at first base in uh, six seasons. He did play two games in the outfield, um, early on in his career, that's definitely not happening. Yeah, he's played uh, one game. No, he hasn't even played one game. No, excuse me, one literally one game, one inning with the Texas Rangers at first base this year, and then four games in 2021, and then one game in 2020. So really, not all that much uh, at first base. So first base is again a bit of a stretch but it would be incredibly frustrating it would be a good signing for the mariners um who are allegedly getting a bigger payroll and i don't know what kind of salary he might command maybe three years 30 million dollars total uh, about 10 million dollars a year i think that would make sense for them but they need a lot of bats and they traded away um a couple of their their good ones and eugenio suarez and also jared kelnick um so they could definitely use some offensive thump from mitch garver it's seeming like that reunion is also uh on the outskirts and and probably not happening as i've talked about many times i think that wyatt langford is going to be uh the rangers dh and it seems like uh he is definitely going to be in the plans uh, evan grant wrote about this and talking with bruce bochi um or i guess uh, bruce bochi talked about this on lb network um about wyatt langford in particular he said uh, quote this langford kid he's special every step of the way he just kept putting up those numbers he'll come into spring training we're going to stay open-minded it's going to be competitive. He'll have a chance to make the club. It's all performance-based. I don't care how old they are. If we think they're ready, then they'll be on the team, end quote. That's a pretty strong uh, vote of confidence for Wyatt Langford, who just turned or will be turning in the next couple of days, uh, 22 years old. He is the Rangers' first-round pick. He has had about two months two and a half ish months of professional baseball under his belt. And he was sensational at literally every stop. And one of the most impressive pro debuts I have seen from anybody in the you know half year after they are drafted, like just absolutely could not have done any better and nearly broke into the big leagues. If not for Evan Carter being there, I think that Wyatt Langford would have been the one called up during the Adoles Garcia injury in the early stages of September. That's how good he was, and that's insane, but that's how good he was, and he is going to probably be the Rangers opening day DH. If it's not him, that's going to be uh, Ezekiel Duran, who is a very good hitter that just kind of got forgotten about because of the way he ended the season, 
but he was still sensational in the first half. And if he was the Rangers every day DH, while you know they are still gaining confidence in White Langford to be MLB ready, which I think he will be by opening day, um, but still, that is sensational depth. And the depth of this lineup is incredibly good. And it's looking like people are forgetting about how good that Rangers lineup is. Cause there's a lot of tweets going around about, Oh, what's the best duo in, in major league baseball? You know, is it, is it Freddie Freeman and, and Mookie and Mookie Betts? Is it, you know, is it going to be uh, Aaron judge and, and Juan Soto? And is it going to be, you know, two guys out in Atlanta or, you know, two guys out somewhere else. And they keep forgetting which team won the world series. And, Fangraphs projections keep forgetting which team won the World Series. It's it's easy to forget because it you know just happened like a month ago. But it, it feels like the Rangers are being one of the more disrespected reigning champs that we've seen in quite some time, especially for a team that's returning basically the entire roster. I mean, there's only three guys that played key-ish roles on this team in September or in October that are free agents and are probably gone. It's Jordan Montgomery, Mitch Garver, and Aroldis Chapman. And the Rangers can replace those guys. Granted, again, I just talked about how much I wanted Montgomery back. But again, even if they don't have him, even if they sign literally nobody else, they, they've already you know made one huge move for their bullpen. But even if they sign nobody else, this is still an incredibly dangerous lineup and there's all this talk about how, oh my god the Yankees lineup is it gonna be so good oh my god it's gonna be the best lineup in baseball and even if Shohei does end up signing with the Blue Jays which is, it's looking like that is going to be the case neither of those lineups is as good or as deep as the Rangers now the one-two punch at the top of the Yankees order um might be the best one top one-two punch in all of baseball I mean Mookie and and Freddie and uh you know couple of guys in Atlanta are also pretty good, but it's not about two hitters in your lineup. This is not basketball where you have a big three and then a bunch of mid role players. And it doesn't matter because if your top three are absolutely sensational, then you could go win a championship. Baseball is not that. That's exactly what the Yankees did literally last year is just go spend at the top end of the market, hope those work out, and uh, depth doesn't matter. That's not the case. The Rangers did that exact thing before 2022, and they were still a 94-loss team. They got two guys at the top of their order that were sensational in Simeon and Seager, Seager. And they had a pretty good year from Nathaniel Lowe and a couple other guys, but not the depth that they had in 2023. That is why this team was so special offensively. That is why this team went so far in the postseason. And that is why they're going to be good again next year. Because that depth is still there. You have a Mitch Garver out the door. Okay, here comes White Langford. Here comes more time for Ezekiel Durant. Maybe some other hitter they sign. I don't know. But still, the depth is there. And you're going to get probably a better season from Josh Young. I mean, let's look at this projected lineup for uh, the Yankees. I mean... Gosh, it's so hilarious that they have DJ LeMahieu leading off. Like, that is, like, they're like, oh, best lineup in baseball. DJ LeMahieu leading off. Okay, with a 713 OPS last year. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely the best lineup in baseball. And that might actually be how they line it up because that's kind of what Aaron Boone likes. And then you have, you know, Juan Soto, Aaron Judge, uh, Anthony Rizzo, Giancarlo Stanton, Alex Verdugo, Glaber Torres, Austin Wells, Anthony Volpe. Ugh. Well, it's not great. And the thing that I love about the Rangers lineup is that even as you get down to the seven, eight, nine hitters, those guys are all still really good. Jonah High might be hitting eighth or ninth in the Rangers lineup next year. And he was still an all-star this year. He still had uh, OPS plus over 100. He still had 18 bombs and 28 doubles. Like The, the guy was still mashing. And a switch hitter who's very good, even at the bottom of your order. I mean, Lily Tavares, for multiple month stretch for the entire first half, had like an 850 plus OPS. He was a dangerous hitter. And he's your number nine guy. He probably will be again this year as a switch hitter with some pop in there. Doesn't always show up as much as you would like, but also very fast and puts together solid at bats. That That's your number nine hitter. That's not even counting 
all the guys who are going to get even better because the Rangers have a lot of young guys that are getting much, much better. And oh, by the way, the top two in their order finished second and third in AL MVP voting. Come over and look at some other ways the Rangers are not being respected like they should as the current title holders. Right after this word from our sponsors. Now, earlier I talked about the Rangers' odds to win the World Series. And as of right now, according to FanDuel, for the 2024 World Series, the Rangers are the uh, fourth favorite to win it all in 2024. They have the Braves at plus 600, Dodgers plus 700, Astros at plus 850, and the Rangers at plus 900, just plus 50 ahead of the New York Yankees, who are at plus 950, which... It feels kind of wild to me. A a team that literally just won it all, literally just won it all, returns the vast majority of their roster, has one of the greatest managers of all time, has several postseason heroes. I mean, Corey Seager is an absolute postseason legend. They have the top two of their order finished second and third in MVP voting. I mean, they had six All-Stars last year. And they're not the favorites to come back? And win it all again? I, I get the Astros are, you know, have been there, done that. Um, and by been there and done that, I mean uh, lost in the ALCS quite a bit in the last few years, which the Rangers have, have never done in their history. But the Astros also lost their manager. And they're ahead of the Rangers? Are they really going to get that much better? Justin Verlander is another year older. And the pitchers who are coming off of a bunch of mediocre seasons last year are still, I don't think they're going to magically get significantly better. And they also have several guys who have had some injury concerns the last couple of years that are the keys of their order in Jose Altuve and Jordan Alvarez. And oh, by the way, there was even some rumors about them looking to trade, you know, Alex Bregman, who is going to be free agent after this year. And Jose Altuve is also going to be free agent after this year. And they're still the favorites. I don't really understand why this Rangers team is being so disrespected coming off of that great year. And it's not just that they had such a great year last year. It's that last year felt ahead of schedule because there are so many young guys in this lineup that I think are going to have even better seasons next year. I mean, Josh Young, we we saw how good he was in the first half of last year. I think he's going to be even better next year. He was an all-star starter and somehow finished fourth in rookie of the year voting, which I still is just such an insane stroke of recency bias. And then instead of every day in left field, the primary left fielder was Travis Jankowski last year, which no shade to him. He had a a decent season. Um, It's going to be Evan freaking Carter, who was absolutely sensational. And I think is going to be uh, maybe not even better than he was in the 23 games he played the regular season. I I think he's going to have a three, four, six slash line. Um, That would be incredible. And he would definitely be rookie of the year. Um, But I think he's going to be a very, very good player for the Rangers. And he's going to be playing a lot more than 23 games unless something goes horribly wrong. And oh, by the way, he's still going to be 21 years old and still figuring it out. I mean, I think Nathaniel Lowe is really due for a bounce back season. He really was not anywhere near his offensive self um, from the season before. But I think there's definitely a lot more power that he's going to tap into. And we saw the walk rate go back to its elite, elite level that it was before. And he's probably going to be even lower in the Rangers lineup, which means less pressure on him and probably better pitches to hit um it's going to be a scary deep lineup and again like i said wyatt langford the addition there um maybe that pushes you know leo Tavares to the bench a couple more games a year and you add wyatt langford's bat in there who is going to be sensational and and in the rookie of the year chase as well and it seems like he and evan carter might be stealing votes away from each other which would be fine because i I wouldn't be surprised if they're both on the opening day roster and playing every day, then I think they're, they might just finish one, two in AL rookie of the year voting because they are both that good. This team is just getting better and better and better. And Oh, by the way, they didn't even have Jacob Grom in the playoffs. They had him for six starts and they might get him back in August this year. Like I, I and they're going to have Max Scherzer for an entire season. Like wh- where is this team getting worse? Where are the other teams getting that much better than the Rangers? I I just really 
don't see it. I don't understand it. And uh, it's it's fun to be the reigning champs and also get to pull the, the disrespect card that nobody nobody believed in this uh, stuff. It's a fun thing to be a fan of just dunking on everybody who didn't believe in your team. Like, literally nobody believed in the Rangers before the playoffs. Everyone thought, that, oh, wow, they lost the division on the last day. And so this team has uh, nothing left, and they were a fluke and a flash of the pan. Even though they're one of the best teams in baseball for the entirety of the regular season, ah, we're just going to ignore that and, and say, no, they're definitely going to get beat out by this Rays team that's much better than them. Oh, they made it past the Rays. Oh, okay, well, the Orioles won 101 games, so, uh, and they've never been swept, so the Orioles are definitely going to take out this Rangers team. Oh, well, they, they made it to the Astros. Well, the Astros have, have been there, done that, and so the Astros are definitely going to take them. Oh, well, the Rangers are in the World Series, but th- this Diamondbacks team, I mean, John Smoltz has never loved a team more than he loved the 2023 Arizona Diamondbacks, and I think he's still holding out hope that, uh, you know, game six is going to happen, and the Arizona Diamondbacks will, will win it in a nine-game series. Um, but that didn't happen because the Texas Rangers are World Series freaking champs. And everyone just seems to have forgotten about that. I haven't. You haven't. And we won't forget about it next year when the Rangers are back in the playoffs, um, which feels like a pretty safe bet at this point. And betting on them to have a big fall off and these other teams who haven't really done much of anything. I mean, the Yankees haven't won a championship since I was a, what, freshman in high school? Maybe a sophomore? No, I think I was a freshman in high school the last time they won a championship. The Blue Jays, well, I, I can't even remember the last time they won a championship. I'm not even sure it was during my lifetime, and I'm nearly 30. Th- these teams that are getting all the headlines, just because you won the offseason doesn't necessarily gonna, you're going to mean this is going to translate into the regular season. The Yankees were very happy about their Carlos, Carlos Rodon signing last year. Um, and meanwhile, they didn't catch nearly as much flack as the Rangers did for signing a pitcher with injury concerns who was injured the vast majority of this year, which just kind of makes me scratch my head. And it is just a fascinating place to see these teams not believing in the Rangers. And it doesn't matter one single bit because the Rangers are the reigning World Series champs, and I think they're going to be even better next year. Now, just some final news and notes. The Rangers did participate in the Rule 5 draft. They drafted a uh, former Yankees pitcher, right-handed reliever Carson Coleman. Uh, They also lost Justin Slayton in the first round. The Mets took him um, and then traded him to Boston. Um, But Carson Coleman is a guy who has struck out quite a few batters uh, as a reliever who was coming off Tommy John surgery. He had that in April of last year. He is probably not going to be ready um, for opening day, which is fine. He can start the season um, on the IL. And so the Rangers can just kind of, you know, give him a, a longer rehab, see if they actually want to keep him. He, he got a fastball that touches up in the upper nineties, sits in the mid nineties, uh, got a, a pretty decent slider. Um, as I recall it, um, guys get pretty good numbers in the minors, not a huge walk problem, not a like, pretty good FIP numbers of guy who can strike out a bunch, not walk a whole bunch, not allow home run, a lot of home runs. That's kind of what you're looking for in a reliever. And the Yankees have, despite uh, me making fun of them for not winning, winning a championship since 2009, they, they have been able to develop quite a few pitchers. They have done a good job at developing homegrown pitchers. They developed quite a few that they used in that Juan Soto deal, um, but still have several more. And Coleman is a guy who they didn't feel like protecting because they've got a lot of other options. The Rangers have not developed a lot of starting pitchers or pitchers at all. Again, the my chagrin for probably losing uh, Jordan Montgomery is probably significantly less if I felt confident about Owen White or Jack Leiter being able to contribute in a meaningful way to be a mid-rotation starter in 2024, but I'm not quite there yet with either of them. I think eventually they might be, um, but still there's a lot of concerns there, and uh, it would be really nice for the Rangers to develop just literally one half-decent starting pitcher um, that is not named Cole Reagans and traded to the Royals for half a season of a rental reliever. Um, But Rangers have a chance to do that with whether it's Cody Bradford or Owen White or Jack Leiter, or maybe it's Kuma Rocker. Maybe it's way down the line and it's Brock Porter. Who knows at this point, but again, the Rangers are World Series champs, so all of these petty concerns of disrespect and, and yada, 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 as fun as it is to yell about them, uh, it doesn't particularly matter because Rangers got their ring, something that none of these teams that are being bandied about as the offseason champs have done And they are not the reigning champs, just like the freaking Texas Rangers are. That's going to do it for this week's editions of Locked on Rangers. Really wish there was a little bit more 
you know, doings happening in the winter meetings. But hey, I bet in the next couple of weeks, the Rangers will make some signings, some trades. I'll look more at into what that could be next week. But until next time, don't forget to enjoy World Series champion Texas Rangers baseball. <laughs>